हेलो गुड इवनिंग स्टूडेंट्स होप योर पेपर वेंट वेल होप यू फॉट वेल आई एम रियली एक्साइटेड फॉर द फैक्ट दैट इन ऑर्थोपेडिक्स फॉर द फर्स्ट टाइम देर वर थ्री क्वेश्चन आज विच यू ऑलरेडी वर अवेयर ऑफ लाइक वी टॉट इट इन ग्रेट डिटेल टू अ ग्रेट एक्सटेंट वी हैव टॉक्ट अबाउट इट एंड लेट्स टॉक अबाउट द रिकॉल वॉट वी हैव कलेक्टेड इन द फॉर्म ऑफ द क्वेश्चन यू सी दिस प्रोबेबली in in my experience in the recent years this probably is for the first time asked question like in a patient with localized bone pain exaggerated in night relieved on taking aspirin now possibility is there that you already are aware of the answer for this question the moment you have seen this sentence you know that there is more bone pain which is happening at night and is relieved dramatically by aspirin we have talked it in detail that if you get this sense in a question then answer for your uh, that particular question is certainly osteoid osteoma so what is the most likely condition the patient is suffering from now is point pe we also trying to gain that whatever is being mentioned in the question in the form of the options was it correct or not right because it's all about the recall that is happening right now so what is the most likely condition the patient is suffering from and obviously the answer for this question is straight away is osteoid osteoma like majority of you must have answered this question <clears throat> all right uh why this osteoid osteoma is having this kind of a feature where there is a relief of pain on taking aspirin because the uh, because the lesion it contains the lesion it contains prostaglandins and cyclooxygenase and when you give a cox inhibitor to the patient obviously there is going to be a dramatic relief in the clinical features that is point number 1 point number 2 the x rays were provided to you and in the x ray there is a radio lucent nidus within the long bone cortex all right a radio lucent nidus within the long bone cortex which is diagnostic for osteoid osteoma you see in any other benign tumor uh the diagnosis is not certain the diagnosis means it is always suggestive of like the x rays are suggestive of this particular tumor but in osteoid osteoma because the possibility of getting this tumor to convert it into a malignant one is extremely rare so you can make out or you can come out with the diagnosis and the diagnosis for this condition is certainly the osteoid osteoma right all right so hopefully you have answered this particular question correct this is possibly the first time i mean uh Uh, those who have attended the class just by reading the question out might have uh, appeared means uh, answer would have flashed in front of them all right in the form of osteoid osteoma right next question is uh, a 34 year old patient after sustaining injury to his right lower limb had a limb kept in external rotation and apparently lengthened that means the left the right lower limb is lengthened and was kept in external rotation what is the most probable diagnosis the patient is suffering from you see <clears throat> let's talk about the dislocations of the hip joint now you already are aware of the fact that in posterior dislocation of the hip joint there is adduction and internal rotation while in case of anterior dislocation of the hip joint there is abduction and external rotation right now in case of posterior dislocation of the hip joint because when the head of the femur is out of the acetabulum it will migrate proximally so there has to be a true shortening of the limb but in case of anterior dislocation of the hip joint when it is moved out the proximal migration of the head of the femur is prevented by rectus femoris muscle anteriorly as a result of which there is no shortening all right so possibly the question is pointing towards anterior dislocation of the hip joint now what are the key features which goes in favor of or before marking the correct answers down external rotation is one thing which is provided to you that goes in the favor of anterior dislocation of the hip joint point number 2 now there is apparent lengthening of the limb which doesn't mount to true lengthening of the limb but in posterior dislocation of the hip joint there is certainly a shortening in fracture neck of femur there is to some extent a shortening while in case of subtrochanteric fracture if it was provided to you in the option in any fracture of the lower limb there has to be a shortening because of the overriding this is the only condition you are left with where there could be apparent lengthening of the limb along with the external rotation deformity so what is the most probable answer for this particular question is the anterior dislocation of the hip joint now in anterior dislocation of the hip joint uh, devendra yes very good it is faber or father but you know father is for flexion adduction internal rotation which is posterior dislocation of the hip 
Faber is for flexion, abduction, external rotation. That is for anterior dislocation of the hip. But remember, it is not always clinically that anterior dislocation comes with flexion. Majority of the time, it could be kept neutral also as far as anteroposterior deformities are concerned. So, it could be kept in extension. It could be kept neutral. But there has to be a certainly abduction and external rotation deformity. That has to be certain, right? Uh, so true, the anterior dislocation of the hip was the answer for this particular question if it was the correct language posted in your question, in your examination, right? Another question, I mean, hundreds of the times we have discussed it. So many times this question has been asked previously also. Here, eight year old, a girl which was mentioned as we have, as we were told, sustained fracture around the elbow or in the arm or in the humerus around two years back. Now, obviously, the examiner is asking about the abnormality in the form of its complication. Now, the patient is having a difficulty in hanging school bag and the deformity is as shown. What is the most probable diagnosis the patient is suffering from? Now, what we have over here is that in this case, there is a deformity, the certain deformity which is which is shown with the extended elbow and this deformity is having an apex which is pointing away from the elbow, away from the midline. So, it is a varus deformity. So, this is cubitus varus deformity. And you already know that cubitus varus is the complication of supracondylar fractures of the humerus, right? It is a complication of the supracondylar fractures of the humerus that is cubitus varus deformity. This is not something new for you, all right? All of you are aware of this fact that supracondylar fracture of the humerus goes into malunion and resulting in a progressive cubitus varus deformity, all right? If you look at the other options, olecranon, obviously not. Supracondylar, yes, it is the answer for this question. Lateral condylar fracture will result in non-union and because of this non-union, there will be a progressive cubitus valgus deformity. So, lateral condylar fracture is obviously not the answer for this question and posterior dislocation of the elbow has to be something else. Means in the question, there has to be something else provided to you. All right. So, uh, Nishant, you are asking about that most common complication of the lateral condylar fracture. You know, lateral condylar fracture results in non-union while supracondylar fracture results in malunion and malunion resulting in cubitus varus deformity progressive while uh, non-union resulting in cubitus valgus deformity progressive. All right. And both these two deformities can only be said varus or varus, valgus when it is demonstrated with the extended elbow. Until and unless the elbow is not extended, you cannot comment upon whether the patient is having a varus or valgus deformity. Right. So, key clinical question, very easy to answer. All right. All right. So, here we have talked about the three questions which were asked possibly in your examination. Next, identify the marked structure. You know, uh, on the flexor aspect of your wrist, there is a possibility that you can see the three tendons. All right. Like when you try to pinch it, the tendon which gets prominent is the palmaris longus tendon. Just radial, that means lateral to that palmaris longus tendon is the flexor carpi radialis tendon. So, if you want to talk about that, if this tendon was highlight, highlighted in the center, in the middle, which is prominent, it is palmaris longus tendon. But if this tendon was highlighted in your question, then it has to be flexor carpi radialis tendon. These are the two tendons which could be demonstrated with this pinching mechanism, which will become, which will make them appear more prominent. Apart from this, there is another tendon which could be demonstrated and that is flexor carpi ulnaris, but it has to be on the medial aspect, right? So, just by its appearance, this can be very easily obtained, all right? Identify the marked structure. So, if the marked structure was on the center, uh, when the two tendons were prominent, then it was palmaris longus, but if it is on the radial side, if the structure was marked, then it has to be flexor carpi radialis, all right? Hopefully, you get the answer for this question. Uh, Clon, there was an option, ignorance of the fracture, something like that. Very good. If this was uh, others, yes, yes, I know that uh, terrible triad related question was there. And I'm again very much excited. Like this is for the first time asked question, terrible triad. We'll be having a discussion on that again. But yes, uh, Clon, if we are having this option, that there was uh, ignorance of the fracture or ignorance of the injury that is particularly pointing towards means was it there in the options or was it there in the question itself because yes when the supracondylar fractures of the humerus are ignored and because of this ignorance 
because of ill treatment because of maltreatment because of no treatment it tends to unite with the displaced fragments and when there is a displaced fragment union then it will result in the complication so if it is provided to you then it obviously has to be a part of the question that means examiner was very sane in writing down these questions for you all right very good <coughs> okay next is uh next question as i told you uh uh, terrible the others we will be talking about this terrible uh, triad later clon you are asking about that it was towards thumb on the lateral side you know if if this was your question like if you are asking about the thumb on the lateral side then uh, look at this the thing which is getting prominent over here this one if it is getting prominent over here here now this is extensor pollicis longus tendon over here if this is getting prominent all right if this was your question all right so they switched arrow for a snuff box too so snuff box no not exactly if they are asking anything related to the tendon then possibly they are asking about the tendon which is guarding the snuff box laterally and that has to be a extensor pollicis longus tendon because you know the movement of the thumb this is abduction and this is extension so if the extension you know, if the thumb is in extension and this thing is getting prominent, then it is extensor pollicis longus tendon. Hope you get the answer for that particular question. All right. All right. Uh, I don't know whether this question was there or not, but we, we are having mixed segments like young male, bleeding gums, bow legs. Now, again, in the question itself, the moment you see the word bleeding gum, you are ready with the answer. And the answer is scurvy because, you know, this is the only condition that we talk about that uh, that that gives you that the examiner gives you as a hint that is delayed healing of the wound or the bleeding gums which is because of the scurvy now what it has to do with the bow legs all of you are aware of the fact that scurvy will result in various changes in the bones at the metaphyseal and the epiphyseal end leading to the progressive deformities in a growing individual or a growing child so young male bleeding gum bow leg what is the vitamin deficiency then answer for this question is obvious that is ascorbic acid that is vitamin c you know vitamin c which is acting as a cofactor in, in 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 maturation of the amino acids that is uh, lysine and proline into hydroxyproline and hydroxylysine vitamin c is a cofactor for hydroxylase enzyme if vitamin c is deficient then there will be no uh, maturation of these enzymes as a result of it there will be a defective collagen type 1 formation and that will result in these weak kind of the bones all right so this is possibly the answer uh, all right avjeet very good painful costochondral beads was also mentioned excellent it means why not you know painful first of all try to understand that the costochondral prominence costochondral prominence over the sternum these are the junctions in between the sternum and the ribs so if these junctions are getting prominent these are known these are appearing as a beads all right in a rosary now these rosaries are found in two metabolic conditions one is rickets and the other one is scurvy all right now the characteristic finding of these rosary in case of ricket is that they are painless and they are round that means they are non-tender but the characteristic finding of these rosary in case of scurvy is that they are sharp and they are tender that means they are painful to touch all right so in case of scurvy they will be painful while in case of rickets they are painless so it is another condition very good avijit that this is another condition which is helping you out in making the correct diagnosis of scurvy all right uh nishant yes this time they left their favorite gct that is true I mean, you were very much prepared for that GCT. All right. Age was around 10 for scurvy. Again, as it is very commonly seen in case of a growing individual. All right. So don't get confused with the word bow legs. And uh, we have already discussed this condition. You know, when we were talking about like in case of rickets and scurvy, what are the things which are common in both of them that they might come with the progressive deformities of the lower limb, both of them. And they also come with the costochondral junction prominences. But these costochondral junction prominences in case of rickets are painless and they are non and they are round. While in case of scurvy, they are painful and they are sharp. All right. So that goes with the answer for this question. Uh, that is ascorbic acid, obviously. All right. So calciferol obviously is not the answer. That is vitamin D deficiency was not the answer because we are not dealing with the rickets. We are dealing with the scurvy in this particular 
condition hopefully you get the answer right and uh, hopefully this was the question yes as as you have confirmed that it was a question present all right next is uh, that what is the name of the muscle uh, which is attached uh, to the mark structure now all of you are aware of the fact that this is what is this this is the lesser trochanter of the femur and the muscle which is attached to this lesser trochanter of the femur are the tendons of the iliacus and the psoas muscle that is iliopsoas iliopsoas is attached to it all right which is the major flexor of the hip joint while sitting when you are sitting then these are responsible for flexing up the hip joints all right so iliopsoas is the name of the muscle which is attached to this all right <coughs> okay now identify the given condition hopefully this is the last question in orthopedics which was asked and again i am uh, i'm i'm uh, i mean i find myself over excited when i say, saw this question for the, that this was the question if at all was asked then it is probably for the first time asked question and you already were aware of the answer for this particular question now what are the three things which you can visualize in this particular question one is that there is a dislocation of the elbow all right dislocation of the elbow joint now this is something which you can very clearly see the second point is that the radial head as you can very clearly observe it over here that the radial head is also fractured basically it is broken into multiple fragments so it, there is a comminuted fracture of the radial head and finally the last thing <clears throat> the last thing over here is that there is a fracture of the coronoid process also so the fracture of the coronoid process so these are the three conditions which are present in this particular question all right uh yes thank you adarsh you are helping us out that there was a history which was provided that there was a fall on out stretched hand and possibly you were getting a question where there was a x ray given and this x ray was having these three findings the first th for, uh, the first finding is dislocation of the elbow another one is the fracture of the coronoid process and the third one was the fracture of the radial head when you combine all three of them then it mounts to terrible triad of the elbow all right so here the answer for this particular question is the terrible triad of the elbow these are the three components of this particular question uh yes so <clears throat> hopefully you get the sense hopefully you get the uh, essence of hopefully we have uh, fracture was not in the option so dislocation of the radius <coughs> okay so uh, basically what we got is that there was a x ray provided where all these three features were provided to you in the particular question and then they have asked that what is the possible uh, injury that the patient has sustained all right <coughs> okay so thank you very much for uh, attending this session hopefully you went uh, hopefully the paper went well all of you uh, we pray that all of you will go through this examination will uh, get uh, uh, through this examination and all the best for your future thank you so much